Once William Roberto decided to tell a story through imagery, he said, don't paint something you don't know about. Don't try to tell a story about world hunger if you don't know anything about world hunger. So I thought to myself, I have something very close to me, a story very close to me, um, very personal, and something I can illust- I feel I like can illustrate very well that is, that is still very fresh in my mind, too. I knew exactly what I wanted to tell, you know. This collaboration of uh, The Glass House was between myself and Roberto Loren, who was a resident at Sculpture Space in Utica, New York. And uh, he must have heard my name that I've been, I'm a working artist out in Utica and knew that he got into the residency program in Utica through Sculpture Space and by chance decided to contact me and, and uh, see if I would be willing to collaborate during some of his time there at his residency program. Like six months before his residency started, I started painting on glass windows. And that was like all I was painting on for the past six months. And uh, he had said that it's kind of interesting that I paint on glass windows because he has constructed um, small scale houses out of window frames, old windows. Maybe that the collaboration should be among that, you know, mock style of a house with, uh, with discarded glass windows and then and painting some sort of imagery on there and and that's what that's what got the ball rolling we were, that's that's where it started that was the uh, initial idea uh, so he goes to me he's like what what are you gonna what are you gonna paint uh september 3rd 2011 was when it first happened the first bleed um and uh, that's that's that was the worst bleed too. I've had two sim- or I've had two all together now. The, the the brain hemorrhages that I had they affected a lot of my fine motor skills. I was in the hospital for fifty something days, um, ICU unit, um, and then to rehab. My nerves had to re- relearn how to make those firing moments to 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 allow me to find my equilibrium and and walk again and my eyes did not work together I lost lateral movement in both my eyes so you get this weird blurred frame by frame imagery you know you get multiple heads or you get multiple eyes and heads and multiple lips you know I lost all the muscles movements in my face my brain would say, hey, smile, or someone would say something funny, and you know, I should have gotten that, um, you know, just reaction, that natural reaction to smile, and I couldn't. You know, my muscles and my skin, it felt different, it fe- and that's part of what was affected as far as my nerves. Um, I knew that I still existed, but at times I just couldn't, I couldn't feel myself. You know what I mean? Right when I woke up, or right when I was. You know, it's actually tough to sleep that whole time, but right when I was starting to function again uh, mentally, uh, I would see the same, and it, you know, lights would all be dark, and I would see the same silhouettes of these white coats standing in a row, talking, interacting with me the best they could, and the best I could. As soon as I got brought down to the rehabilitation center is when they allowed me to, to pick up a pen and draw it, and I drew these very abstract um, white coats. Just this row on this very you know, thin piece of paper that was perfect for the size of the stance of the white coats. And that was the, that was the first image that I, that I drew. I signed a lot of my work at that time um, with the words reset. Um, Cause I felt like my body had been pressed, the, bu- the button of reset has been pressed. After I recovered almost almost to 100%, I had another rebleed a year later in February, and that that bleed was much much less, but um, for my morale it was much much worse. Diagnosis was after the second bleed, and all this information that they've collected over the first bleed, and in between the time to the second bleed, and all that so all that stuff, 
is what brought them to the conclusion that it was this thing called Kefir San Angeloma that pretty much says, you know, you're going to bleed. Totally um, um, changed my whole outlook on life and, and it has affected my art and has been very therapeutic to paint um, in response to. I, I'm still suffering with uh, the realization that, you know, um, the diagnosis says that I will uh, most likely bleed again in my lifetime and it's just a random occurrence. It's something that will always be with me whether I want to or not. So now I, I like to I like to add that into artwork, especially especially in this project, being about, you know, all of what has happened. And I did a lot of heart imagery that, you know, could represent lots of things, but for me it represented uh you know, courage and, and heart that I still feel, felt, you know, when I was um when I was struggling through my illnesses. Um, some of the hearts I I wrote the word hope. Still King, you know, represents a whole slew of things, you know, especially the fact that I I still wanted to be king of my body. I, I still felt like I was as, as best as I could be and, and that I would be someday. Through the experience of the illness, I, I learned a lot about mortality and, and I was at the age where I felt totally like I would never, never die. You know, I was invincible, you know, all that stuff. Nothing could touch me. So I had, um, so I illustrated a lot to do with, um, you know, my own mortality. And so some of it was uh, of skeleton human skeletal figures uh some of them did represent you know death as far as like you know if if, if things had would would have gone worse and, and you know someday we all will face face death you know a lot of it is i'm trying to work with being okay with that So through that time of painting these images onto the constructed glass house, I had gotten the unfortunate news that a glass window that I've been recently painting on um, had fallen off the wall of the gallery and smashed. And it got me thinking, I was all bummed out, and it got me thinking like, wow, you know, I'm painting on such a very fragile material, and this is not very archivable, and, and one of the... Roberto's uh, ideas was he, he would love to have this glass house outside of sculpture space, outside in the elements, um, so people could see it, we could light it up at night, you know, passerbyers could walk, and just to have it near the landscape. And it was a great idea. And I thought to myself, like, oh, but that, you know, so elements, rain, sun, it's, it's all going to do something to this. Are we going to try to keep this afterwards? And so I brought to him the idea, I said, what if we destroyed it somehow? You know, painting it was therapeutic, but wow, to to put it in a million pieces somehow, you know, that's a whole nother level of therapy, you know? So we finally fell upon the idea of, you know, let's, let's personally throw rocks through it. And then it went to, well, let's get a group of people as well to throw rocks through it. You know, let's, let's involve other people in helping to um, not erase. At, at one point we thought erase these memories, but it wasn't erasing these memories. It's almost um, ex expanding upon our creation. You know what I mean? You can't keep everything forever. So let's let it be at our hands and then let's let that be the completion, the, uh, you know, the evolution of it transforming into a million pieces. It was great to have other people be involved, especially I had had some of my friends that know what I went through, that were with me when I went through it, um, and also some, some people I've never met before.
one of the, the highlights of it was that I did not see one person throw a stone without having a smile on their face afterwards. It's, especially myself. Every stone I threw hit, I, I just, you can't not throw rocks through glass without having a smile on your face. And so that was a hidden or an unexpected plus of this. This being something I've never dreamed of doing or never really expected a lot that came out of this um, to have happened the way it did, you know, even the way that some of the, the glass broke because I layered paintings behind paintings. At one time we thought the piece was going to be done once we destroyed it. But once we saw the beauty of what was left over, we said, no, it's not. It's, there's no way that it can be finished. We collected all the glass and, and we are right now in the process of experimenting on the limits of where we can bring, bring these broken glass shards. Um, too. How can we display them and have them hold their own, but still, but still in an eerie way holding on to what they once were? Roberto once has had some amazing ideas on how to, to push this even farther with the broken glass. It could be, you know, represented as a, as, a, as a form of rebirth. What grows from things that are destroyed or, or death is, is always something else. <laughs>